This is why, this is why it said in the Bible, if, if you just look at a woman, you have committed adultery with her in your heart. So if you look at a woman lustfully, you've already committed adultery. In other words, the law is already imposed upon you from that moment because it's the soul that the law operates upon, not your action. Now, the action causes further damage to your soul, and there's another law associated with that as well, from God's perspective, but the actual cause is the soul's desire. The laws of the universe, every one of these people are in the first sphere, in the first sphere, not because necessarily of what they did, but because of how they felt right, when they did what they did. You look at the first example that we had today, that group of spirits who were there, she, she said, I didn't do anything wrong when I was on earth. I did not murder when I was on earth. I didn't do anything damaging to other people. I don't understand why I'm, why I'm here. Yeah. But she f had feelings within her, and the feeling within her was, those people are lesser than I am. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's the feeling that was within her, and that caused her to be in that location. Does that make sense? Just the feeling within her. She didn't even act upon it. She didn't murder any of them. Right? She, she didn't even realize it was wrong at first. And she didn't even realize it was wrong, but it was still the feeling within her. Yeah. Well, it's not always wrong <coughs> to hire someone to help you to work, or if you pay them adequately and provide the job for them. Certainly. That's not wrong. Certainly. I don't know what the circumstances were their slaves. Yes, they were servants. She called them servants, but I think she referred to them as slaves. Thought so maybe you got a different picture. Well, no, no, they were they were they were servants, and and but they treated them as slaves. Yeah. They they treated them like you you can't interact. Well, what was it? Do you remember her father's emotions? Well, actually, I could probably feel. There were pictures coming from her in her mind about things that happened mm -hmm. as she was discussing it. And one of the pictures was when she had an act of kindness towards one of these servants, her father punished her for her act of kindness mm -hmm. to one of the servants. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what's going on there? Eventually she learned that you don't treat these people kindly. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's then the feeling or the emotion within her soul. Now, in her case, quite a lot of these emotions came from others, came from her father and her mother and so forth. So there are very few law of compensation effects she will need to work through for herself. Uh, in other cases, they often go down the track of further damage, you know. So my father treats servants badly, my father beat them or whatever, and so what do I do? I go down the same track and I decide I'm going to beat them too. Well, obviously, there's a further damage now that's going to occur to my soul. It's no longer just my father did it, and so I'm afraid of my father. Mm -hmm. It's now I'm choosing to do it. So, and every one of these things that we do all have different laws that are involved that affect the soul. And the beauty of the Father is that, I'm talking now about our Heavenly Father, is that every one of God's laws deal with the true cause of why the person chose to do what they did. Every one of them. And you can't get out of it. You can't weasel your way out of it, buy your way out of it, right? You can't do any of these things. Just try to ignore it. You can't just try to ignore it. You can't do any of these things. From God's perspective, it will be exposed. In other words, the, the law, you know, the laws that we make, we make and enforce them. The law that God makes, are simply enforce self-enforcing. They are very much yeah, it, so. They enforce themselves. They enforce themselves. And our, the laws we make don't work. That's because right. Because we, they don't enforce themselves. Yeah. I, I uh, in 1962, I worked. I, I taught one year at school in Texas, and then I went to California and taught a year there. Yeah. I was absolutely amazed at the laws that they had in California in 1962. Yeah. Yeah. And it. And the whole school system is gone. If we make more laws, we have more tests, we more do more of these things, we'll finally get what we want. Exactly. And it hasn't been working. Exactly. It never works. And it never will. <laughs> yeah. Well, and we're kind of slow on the uptake sometimes. Yeah, well, this is the problem. We think we're going if we do more of the same, then yeah. it's going to be better result. But, but more more of the same of what does not work still yeah. does not work. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
and we don't come to realize that. Mm -hmm. Whereas God's, this is a beauty, once you learn more and more about God's laws, you start seeing the perfection of every one of them, and you start seeing how beautiful the whole thing is in the sense that they're all self-governing. God doesn't sit up there saying, oh, you just did a bad thing, oh, you just did a bad thing, oh, I'll just write that down in my book, right? <coughs> you did a bad thing, just write that down in my book, and you did a bad thing, I'll just write that down. Oh, you did a good thing, I'll just write that down in the positive <laughs> side, right? <laughs> God doesn't do that, right? He doesn't need to because all of God's laws are all... <laughs> we're to ourselves. Yeah, we're all this, uh, it's all self-enforcing, right? So God can just enjoy <laughs> watching the beauty. Wow. So of, are you having fun yet? <laughs> yeah, watching the beauty of His creation unfold, right? Uh, and, and this is why when you, see, you know, when you see how powerful it is to make laws that deal with causes, you start understanding how important causes are and how how little of little importance dealing with an effect is.